This is the reason we ask fly fishing editor Jack Dennis and his lecture partner Gary LaFontaine to give us their perspective on approaching this or any other river. Well Gary, we're on the Green River. Probably one of the best early season rivers in all of the West or all of America. Well, it's one of the best all season rivers. I don't know if it's any better in the spring than it is in the oh. winter or the summer or any other time. One of the characteristics of the green this time of year is seeing people with fish on. Uh, this is a river where people can catch a lot of fish. Uh, it, there's 12,000 fish per mile in this river, Gary. You know that? I should hope so. This can be kind of frustrating this early season uh, dry fly fishing for uh, beginners because the insects are fairly small. They are. They're uh, betas, uh, blue-winged olives. Uh, they can range in size, different species from size 18 on down to size 24. You know, beginners have a tough time seeing them, don't they? <laughs> hey, what do you mean beginners? Old people have a tough time seeing them too, Jack. <laughs> you, and, you and me, buddy. You know, Gary, we've been watching a couple anglers down below us here casting. And you know, it's, it's really something is that they, these fish really see a lot of different anglers, a lot of different approaches, and, and a lot of different flies. And, and I think approaching these fish probably as important as is actually having the right fly on. I think we need to go down there and try to investigate it a little more. What do you think? Hands on. <laughs> Hands on, right? Regardless of where a conversation between Jack and Gary goes, which we have discovered could be anywhere, it oftentimes ends up being about bugs, insects, flies, and their variety of forms. The best thing about being with these two bug buddies is you can ultimately glean a good deal of useful information from their argumentative style and wanderings. We're down here at Little Hole, and this is a place that can be somewhat intimidating for beginning fly fishermen. There's lots and lots of anglers, and we're not more than 20 feet from the landing and there are fish coming up left and right. The whole area is just blanketed with insects. Gary, what advice would you give a person that comes here the first time? Stop shaking. <laughs> <laughs> I know I've been fishing for a long time, and you have too, and it still gets us excited. There, there, their two heads just popped up. I know. Right, and, and, and you're sitting here talking. There's something yeah. wrong with you, Jackson. I know. I'm a sick person, Gary. Sick man. Uh, I guess I guess the advice I would get Give, us, give somebody is to pick out one fish, is to not try to flock shoot. You gotta pick out one fish and try to take him instead of just having a cast go left, right, here, there. You know, it's interesting, Gary, we got a blanket of midges on the water and we've got some uh, blue wing olives. Observation, ooh, there was a nice fish that just came up out there. Observation is the key to fly fishing and, and right now that I, I've watched some bigger flies go by and, and, and the fish have not taken them. That, that tells me something. It, uh, uh, I've noticed that either they're taking the midges or it could be spinners. We're, we're kind of playing detective, aren't we? They're taken fairly uh, carefully. A few Now there's a few getting a little bit more active. We're seeing a little bit more rolls, a few uh, bigger heads coming up. And they could be taking the uh, mayfly duns off the top. Now there's, there's uh, no, how do you explain having spinners, which there are insects that have laid their eggs and died, and yet we see same type of insect emerging right now? Well, let's run through the whole process. You have the nymph that lives on the bottom. The nymph will swim up to the top and break its way through the surface film. The fish could take them at that stage as an emerger. Then you have the dun, the mayfly dun, riding on top of the water, drying its wings. Well, after a day or so, those duns are going to come back. It could be at the same time of day as an egg layer or what we call a mayfly spinner. And so it's a so it's the remnants of last yesterday's hatch coming back. Absolutely. And so Absolutely. they coincide, and that presents some problems for the angler. You better decide what they're feeding on. Right. How do you make that decision? One fish at a time. That's right. In other words, there could be one fish out there feeding on midges, another one feeding on emergers, and another one feeding on dry flies. You have to watch the fish. You have to read the rise form. Now there's a fish right over there at the edge of the current line between the slow and the fast water. That fish is feeding on emergers. How can I tell? Because of the way he's rolling and really not breaking the surface. But you look downstream, there's a little backwater there, there's fish cruising. 
you see a little bubble that they're leaving on the surface, those are taking duns. Yeah. There, see him take that dun right off the top and then see his tail come through? There, see him again? Pop, 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 pop. All you gotta do is figure out where he's coming up next. That's a classic situation you would see in still waters, and yet because we have a backwater here, a very slack backwater, we're seeing that in a river like the Green. Just ahead, some fishing and towing done. And what it is, is, is that it's just enough elk here to, like a comparadon, except it's further down. Right. It's just the emerging when they come out and the right. wings haven't dried. But it really is good for putting uh, emergers. See, we're going to add this little emerger here. This has got a little bit of foam on it. Just a simple, a little bit smaller. So we've got, you know, there's several bait, different betas that are out there. It's not That's just right. one one insect. And you got three or four different sizes. And I've got it about no oh, six to eight inches away. And both of these will float in there. This will float right in the surface film. I, I probably won't be able to see it. So I'm gonna gonna have to I'm gonna have to watch for activity near that fly. Okay, and you understand that you could have absolutely the perfect fly and still have a hard time catching that fish because there's so many naturals oh, right. on there. You're competing right. with the naturals. Right. So what do you have to do? Pray prey and you have to time the rise you have to right. be in the right spot at the right moment you right. you can't scatter shoot now you guys will let the fly out and try to guesstimate where that fish is feeding and, and put it in this in his lane and hope that he sees your fly you know if we had some sun right now you could see these fish I don't think they'd even be here you know with all this activity around here that's that's called blind fishing <laughs> All fish are great, Gary, you know. I'll catch any fish, Jack. I, I've, I've never been proud. Yeah. I think now that we got our leader straightened out, we can go out for, for that bigger one. Oh, he got tangled up in the other fly now. No, he's off. Okay. Okay, well, we don't want to do overfight him here. Too, too many people right around. Oh, little, little guy. Nice fish, though. You know, you if, you're in, if you're in a small stream, that would be a, that'd be a fine fish. That's not that small. You know, I uh, did we a We get seminar. spoiled here in the green. You know, I did a seminar back in uh, Gunpowder Creek in Baltimore, right outside of the city. Uh, I, I, fished, fish. I fished Gunpowder Falls many yeah. times. And I uh, caught a fish about this size. I said, well, well, let me get this little fish off, and I'll show you how to fish streamers. And they, they all went, oh, oh, we've never seen a fish that big here. Well, I've seen, I, they, they've seen them that big, but that is a nice fish in many waters. There we go. Jack and Gary will be back next week in this very same spot. This time, we'll go under the surface to get a fisheye view of the insect life that abounds here. And it's not just what you see, but what you don't see. If you don't see fish flashing and moving underwater, that means they're probably gonna be tied into the banks and you're gonna to have to get your flies down under. This is Gary LaFontaine at a seminar in Green River, Wyoming. He's giving some interested anglers a lesson in approaching a river. Everything Gary relates in one way or another has to do with bugs. It's the insect life of a stream that's fascinated him and made up a good share of his life's work. Okay, Gary, why don't we retrieve you some rock? Yeah. You want me to go swimming for your rocks? I thought you said there's rocks here. No, they said it was very shallow all the way across. I said you could be neck deep in the wading pool. <laughs> yeah, that's true. With the help of his traveling lecture series partner, Jack Dennis, the underside of a rock reveals even more. Now this here is a free-living caddisfly larva. Somebody want to grab that and pass it around? What do you mean you're not? You have to eat them at the end. That's part of the thing here. <laughs> These two exceptional fishermen have been traveling and teaching together for nearly a decade. What they have forgotten about fly fishing, flies, and aquatic life, most of us will never know. This is why we drag them downstream to a very different section of the Green River. We join Jack and Gary on the Green just below Flaming Gorge Reservoir. Here it runs cold and clear and is filled with trout. The cool, consistent water temperature makes for ideal trout habitat. Insect life is restricted but prevalent and offers our two experts an abundance of bugs to explore. Well, Gary, you can tell it's a 
Heck of a hatch when you can see those birds above the water like that just grabbing the insects. Well, that's perfect when you're lazy. As you lay down, you take a nap with your eyes open, and you see the birds stop moving, you know it's time to get up and start fishing. That's